So we need to take a look, say, at the entire cooling water system program. I like to refer to this as a complete cooling water treatment program. The initial conditioning, as we've talked about, for cooling towers, for the heat exchangers, even for the piping, an extremely important aspect to be able to get started on a proper way of protecting your equipment for long life expectancy and preventing a lot of corrosion problems and deposit problems for the first year of operation if you don't do that. Then you must choose, of course, the best deposit control agents for scale control and fouling, and also a corrosion inhibitor and a biocide. Make sure all of those are properly being utilized because if you eliminate one of those, uh, you don't do a good job in one, the whole program can fail. So you could have some biological growth in your system and you can't get the corrosion inhibitor to the metal surface, the program will fail. So you have to really take a look-see at the entire system. So how do you do this? You do this by knowing your system and being able to identify all of those areas that are contacted by the cooling water. What are the metals in the tubes? That's the most sensitive, most thin areas that you have of the heat exchangers or the plate frame heat exchanger. What are the lines? What are the water boxes of the tube sheets? And even the cooling tower, if it's metallic, you really have to identify what you have there before you could actually select the cleaning, pre-treating, and, and even treatment program. The equipment design is important. You have water going through the tubes, which is much desirable, or if you have water on the shelf side where you get a lot of accumulation deposits or in packets, you need to know what what type of flow you have. You may have very stagnant or low flow conditions, and that's tough to treat with water treatment. You need to know the type of fill you have in your cooling tower. Remember, film back fill versus splash fill. So backfill can foul up even if you can't see it, it may internalize. So the operation of the system, you must know what's your maximum water temperature so you can identify the scaling tendency of the water. You need to know what the minimum water velocities are. If it's down to less than one foot per second, you may have to increase your deposit control agents and maybe not be able to do as good of a job. Do you have any stagnant areas like, like uh, you, like the ends of, uh, of uh, piping that have been put in, dead, what would you call dead ends. I, that's very, very bad, particularly in a new system, uh, because it will have stagnant water in there. It'll, it'll harbor various type of bioorganisms and cause corrosion, and you can't get the water treatment into those stagnant areas. So try to tie those in so you get circulation through even dead, dead legs in your system. You need to know what your contamination is from air or from water, even from the process operation itself. And then, of course, we, water conservation is a key that people are interested in as well. And water conservation be due to higher cycles of concentration, could be using the newer technology of chemicals that are available. We have many new scale inhibitors. We have quad polymers. We have crystal modifiers. We have a variety of different products that are available for scale control, much more effective than what they used to be years ago. And uh, sometimes people are looking at softening of the blowdown and returning that water back to the cooling tower. So you can recycle some of that water, go much higher cycles. But don't forget the non-chemical technique where you usually have to use filters. Uh, and of course screens and what have you. And then some of the non-chemical devices are very effective. You have to evaluate those yourself on each system, whether it works or not for your system, for skill control and biocontrol. And that's the technique that's being utilized regularly. So for water reuse, if you're working with trying to recycle wastewater and, try, and trying to save fresh water for your system and costs, successful in many industries, and this is certainly what's happening in the future. Many systems are going to recycle wastewater, uh, either that internally generated by using what water you can generate internally in your plant, such as softener, rinse, and RO reject, or even boiler blowdown, or even chiller condensate, or all of those are good possible uses for your cooling tower, and uh, it could save you fresh water supplies. Or you can use an externally available source, such as what frequently is used today, which we call recycled water, or, or it's, uh, it's actually recycled treated municipal wastewater, and usually it's uh, treated not only for tertiary, but sometimes only uh, secondary, but again, you have to look at the quality. People have even been capturing rainwater to be able to use that in some states. Colorado, unfortunately, you can't you can't do that. It's against the law to capture rainwater, but I think that probably will change down the road. If you want to stay with the green products available, there are many of these available. And you should consider these for solving your problems. Again, not only being able to initially protect your equipment, but also to be able to utilize things that are non-toxic for discharge. For biocides, ozone is used. 
that's a good environmentally friendly product. Chlorine dioxide is, other peroxides are used, and some quats are very effective. Corrosion inhibitors, where you see many organic materials like polyquats and what have you are being utilized, silicates are used, even some tin salts are being utilized more and more today as being a green environmentally available product for cooling water systems. We even for deposit control, as mentioned before, we get it from oysters. This is poly, poly uh, uh, polymers that are utilized that the oysters actually will control its scale formation. You know, the oyster shell is calcium carbonate, that scale. And how, if he continued to build that scale, he would eventually close up his entire oyster. So he has to have a way of stopping it. We have learned that we can utilize that same type of thing in cooling water systems. Though. Polyasperitic acid is what's used there. It's a very interesting approach. Then, of course, non-chemicals, as we talked about fillers and the non-chemical devices that can be utilized to be able to protect your, your system and be green. How do you know whether your treatment program is working? You've got to examine your equipment during outages or whenever you can. As soon as you can, open the equipment, look for the deposits, look for type of corrosion and what's happening. Take biological samples, take deposit samples to find out what's going on. Make sure that you look at that every time. I like to record that on, on taking pictures. Today with the digital cameras and what have you, we can record that and now we'll have it available for the next outage so we know what, what it looked like. Is it improving or is it the same or has it gotten worse? So you monitor your system online as an indirect way of finding out whether it's going on. You do this, of course, with corrosion coupons or, or you can instantaneous polarization, which tells you immediately what the corrosion rates are. You can have deposit monitors that will give you excellent information before you actually see it in your equipment. You can do bio-corrosion by specific monitors as well. Uh, there's a number of ones that are being utilized today, some very, very effective ways. Uh, and also, of course, biodeposits by, by looking at the various analytical methods. A ATP is very common, but DNA is used now quite extensively, very rapid uh, and very, very accurate. Remember, it's the sessile organisms that you have instead of the planktonic. What are the difference? The sessiles are the stickers. They're the ones that cause the deposits and the corrosion problems and the deposit problems we have. The planktonic are the guys that float around, and they don't give us that much problem, but, but if we find a lot of them, we know that we've got a lot of sessiles as well. So I hope some of these uh, problems and some of these solutions have been useful for you. I uh, hope that you can apply them in your systems if you do have any of these problems coming up or you might anticipate these problems. And I do thank you for listening, and I'll be glad to answer any questions.